is a show, SM Enlightenment in full effect. I am the great Doc B. Don J in the house. And the man on the mix, he is the brand. With it, Stevie D inside the place to be. Hey, this is what we want you to do. All right, we want you to register with RadioC.com right now. Okay. Hey, hop in the chat room. Okay. This is an interactive show. Okay. It's interactive, baby. We're going to interact with, with you. All right, so we want you in the chat room. And also, you're going to need to be in the chat room later on when we do our uh, dime bag trivia. Okay, so you got to do that. And you can only win if you're in the chat room, baby. So hop on in the chat room and uh, let's get this uh, party started here. So was it a good week? You had a good week, Don Jay? Mr. Grand, was it? Yeah, man. Hey, hey, if you found Stevie's headphones at Van Dome, he wants them back. You know, he got expensive headphones, man, and leave it there. And some grimy-ass DJ will go and steal it. But anyway, that's, we ain't going to air out all personal garbage out here. But anyway, um, this you know, it was a good week overall. But, you know, it was a sad. We had some sad things that went down, you know, to remember. Uh, you know, remember some sad stuff. Michael Jackson, um, yesterday was the anniversary of uh, of his death, 30th anniversary. So, um, you know, the King of Pop, we definitely missing the King of Pop. And a lot of us are missing the King of Pop. But you know who I saw is really missing the King of Pop? It's Sister Ola Ray. Mm. Ola Ray, yes. Ola Ray is the model and actress who played Michael Jackson's girlfriend in the Thriller video, okay? Now, Ola Ray, Ola Ray was, uh, uh, you know, discovered, you know, uh, initially by Playboy, okay? She was a she was a Playboy uh, model and dancer, okay? But Ola Ray ended up getting the part for the, the whole Thriller thing after... Jennifer Beals said no. After Jennifer Beals turned it down, you know? Now, uh, Ola Ray was a former, uh, as I said, Playboy model, centerfold, and, and a struggling actress when she got the part. But soon afterwards, after she got that part and she became a household name, everybody knew who she was. Everybody wanted her to be in their movies and, and all that because she said the phone never stopped ringing. But, you know, she was just a, a little bit addicted to the lifestyle, baby. You know, she liked to party a little bit, liked to sniff a little bit. <sighs> <laughs> so, you know, and then she hooked up with Jim Brown. Okay, Whoa. she hooked up with Jim Brown, and you know I don't know why it is. And Jim Brown, she like now, now Jim Brown. You know, hey, hey, Jim, don't get mad at me. You know, I, but I, I'm just saying he seemed like a guy to always have his head together. But why his friends are like the biggest screw ups in Hollywood? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so Jim Brown said she was sniffing too much coke. He kicked her out. And by the time he kicked her out, then, then she's pregnant. And and then we had to go through a whole big Maury Povich kind of uh, scenario to find out who the baby daddy was. It was a, Jim Brown took the paternity test. No. <laughs> was it? Was it? Was it the real estate broker? No. Was it Don J? No. So it ended up being a uh, <laughs> the pool cleaner, the milkman, you know, the candlestick maker. I don't know. But anyway, it ended up being a cam a cameraman, TV cameraman from uh, CBS uh, named Terry Clark. And um, hey, you know, now he pays uh, $1,000 a month in child support. And, uh, you know, she getting that. She getting the Michael Jackson royalties. So big ups to Ola Ray. And that's that's us. Uh, as we remember Michael Jackson, we like to remember not only Michael Jackson, but, you know, the people that were close by. You know, people that were close by. And other entertainment news, Tony Parker is suing the NYC nightclub for $20 million. Okay. Now, Tony Parker, as you know, he was in the nightclub with Chris Brown and and <laughs> Drake was going at it and caught himself a nice eye injury. You know, I know we got some Tony Parker pictures there, you know. Show Tony Parker off for the ladies. You know, they want to see Tony Parker. And, um... You know, he, uh, so he's basically suing the club, all right? The club is fighting with him about the whole thing, all right? And uh, 
this that already looks jacked up. Yeah, well, he's looking this. He got to look two way. I think I think it, it was Eva Longoria that that you know gave him the eye jammy in the first place. <laughs> There's a real reason. See, and, and you know what? If he was with Eva Longoria, he he, brought, he wouldn't be in the club in the first place. See, she would have kept. She would have kept his behind out of the club, and he wouldn't have caught the eye jammy from the flying piece of glass. But you see, this whole thing might end up preventing him from being in the Olympics. That's right. So you know, you can't make twenty. You don't get paid for to be in the Olympics. But still, though, I mean, that's it's twenty like million. A, twenty million. But as an athlete, that's that's an important thing. So you know, it's pretty safe to say. That the brother might have to go through some surgeries. Okay. Speaking of surgeries, oh my lord, what has happened to little Kim, folks? Mm. Little Kim, hey, you know, that's how little Kim used to look. No, that, that's still transformation. No, it's not. That's little Kim in 2001. That's little Kim, and, and she's kind of hot there, huh? Look like Eve, yeah, yeah. She looked like a little like Eve. You know, and that, and that, and then this still Lil Kim too, right? You know, back in the day, you know, Lil Kim was hot. Got more Lil Kim. See, I, I, I wanted us to. Yeah, I like her with the black hair. See, the black hair. Is I got a lot of pictures of Lil Kim for a reason. Okay, all right, because I want you to really remember how Lil Kim used to look. Show us some more Lil Kim. Ah, that's Lil Kim in the mugshot. You know. When she got busted. Alright. And little Kim. Some more little Kim. That's that's craziness. Look, even the guy that's on stage with her is like looking at her like, what the what did you do to yourself? And and, and finally, I Oh That is little Kim! That is little Kim! She looks like he, a that, that, that ain't no Foxy Brown. That's little Kim. That's the overweight Chinese woman. Hey. Hey, could you go back to that first picture? Hey, go back to that first picture. Okay. <laughs> okay. We went from this to this. Crazy. Crazy. I'm telling you, man. I, I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. You know, I, I don't know what happened. You know, a disaster happened. She had a fight with a plastic surgeon. And the plastic surgeon won. So, in other entertainment news, Octomom is back in the news. The very lovely Octomom, Nadia Sullivan. She's uh, recently been, uh, you know, had, had a, a bad flight on, uh, on the plane there. Virgin America, and she's complaining, saying that, uh, you know, that they treated her bad on the plane, that they was dissing her, and, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, it, it's just, it's just a bad thing, you know, you know what I'm saying, for some, you know, for some of the people that, you know, they just can't give Octo Mom the respect that I, I, I feel that she deserves, we need to give Octo some respect, you know, what's your feeling on Octo, uh, I already know. I already know. <laughs> no respect at all. But anyway, you know, she's, uh, she'll be all right, I guess. 50 Cent got in a car accident, hurt himself up pretty bad. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh you know, we're, we're, we're hoping that 50 Cent gets better. You know, they said he's in the hospital. He's not, no non, uh, no life-threatening injuries. Okay. I'm all right. You know, man. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Hey, if you get shot up nine times, you know what I'm saying? Car accident. Uh, no car accident. It ain't nothing. You know. All right. You know. But also, in, in 50 Cent News, you know, we also caught his ex-girlfriend who posed nude recently for a magazine, the very lovely Chelsea Handler. Uh, 50 Cent was hitting that. That's, that's, that, that's Photoshop. Look at her head. Something ain't right. You think that's Photoshop? Something ain't right. That's courtesy media takeout. Um, that's right. Well, who knows? Time for my favorite part of the show, folks. Booty news. <laughs> Time for the booty news. Okay. 
and booty news, folks. All right. Uh, there's a lot of question about Dre and Michelle, whether or not Dre and Michelle's uh, booty is real. So, you know, did she get booty implants? What we need to do is we need to look at uh, the Dre and Michelle's booty. Now, 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 let's see. Well, that's not much of a booty shot, but it is Dre still all the same. I like to look at her. Let, let's see. Oh, there we go. Now, what do we think? Is it real or is it like implants? Don Jay. Now, now you see, now there's no need for an implant there. Actually, it looks kind of yeah, small there. Look, look, the, the I think that that's. Us. Look at how they stare. Her, her back is way up front and she's doing some weird model stance. Okay, all Who right. stands like that? Well. Yeah, see, now, now, uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, but from the side, you can still see the panties, so that ain't all butt. It's like the new, new butt. Well, see, yeah, see even, side, but see even, but with that pose, with that pose, you see the panty. You can't. <laughs> well, the new butt that's coming up. You about to see the new butt. The new butt, yeah, yeah. See, but it, the, the, new butt, the, it, the new butt. There's a new butt. See, now that's the no, new button. No, did you get the couch, couch picture? You got the couch picture. You got Watch the couch, the couch picture, picture, don't you? The couch picture. That's all you got. Oh. Okay. Well, that, that's the new butt right there. You know, yeah, that's one look, picture. Look at her, new her back is curved and starts four inches. Well, I wish you had the couch shot because then you would have proved it. Hit us 100%. up in the chat room, folks. Hit us up in the chat room. Let us know. What do you think? Do you think it's real or do you think it's not real? You know, let us know. And, uh, you know, I know that we, we we have to have the very lovely April Freshness. Is she standing by? Ah, okay, okay. So <clears throat> we're going to check in with April. All right. Now, of course, last week we, we, we uh, gave you the top five uh, male and uh, uh, celebrities. Okay, but... I, I I got I caught a little bit of flack about it all, you know, because ladies were like, hey, you know, there's there's people that, you know, that you just did not include and they were upset about this. So I had a couple of amendments to it. All right. So I needed to show you for the ladies, okay, uh they they, they said that David Beckham had to be listed as one of the, the hottest uh He's married. Is it supposed to matter? Is it supposed to matter? But you know, I had to do that for the ladies. Let, let them know, okay, David Beckham. I, you know, I know that you want to see him, so we, we we give you David Beckham. You know, next time, you know, you can't blow me up now. You can't blow me up. You can't blow up my my Facebook. You can't blow up my phone. Okay, because I gave you that to you. All right. The other one was Tay Diggs. Okay, ladies, Tay Diggs. Give you Tay Diggs too. So now we have more than five. You know. <laughs> now we have more than five. We have seven now. Okay. You know. And you know, not for nothing, but you know, I you know, I, I definitely wanted to also give uh my own opinion of some of the ones that I thought were hot. That celebrities, you know what I'm saying? Some hot celebrities, because there's there's some hot ones. You know, we just talking about the very lovely Bria Murphy. $50 million. Bria Murphy. $50 million. Now, is the body worth $50 million? Or is it insured for $50 million? It's her inheritance from Eddie. That's her inheritance. From Eddie. Wow. Her papa. So, uh, or, well, does she get that after he die? Or does, does she just get that I like... 21. After she turned 21. Something like that. But she's inherited... $50 so she got fifty million dollars. So she look, she looked like like the way that she looks, the way that she looked, and got fifty million. And her father's Eddie Murphy. Rhea Murphy. Rhea Murphy. And her father's Eddie. And her father's Eddie. Murphy. Nice stuff, you know. And the and the, the other one, the the other the the other one that uh that I thought was uh also uh very lovely, okay, is uh. My girl Denise Vassy, all right, the single ladies, okay, absolutely gorgeous. So you know what, what I'm a, what I'm gonna come around to doing is I did the five hottest 
male celebrities for the ladies. We're gonna come around in the top five hottest female celebrities for, for us guys. You know what I'm saying? Cause and I, I think it's only fair for us to do that, okay? So we're gonna get into that, all right? Uh, probably in the weeks to come. So check this out. Stick around, baby, because coming up, we're gonna bounce to a break real quick, all right? But coming up, we're gonna get into the whole history of hip hop in New England, all right? And I got an expert that's that's gonna be uh, gracing us, blessing us, all right? Uh, my main man, White Flash, he's coming up. And uh, if we get around to it, we'll, we'll definitely talk about some race relations in America. I got another segment for you, the weirdest laws in America. And coming up, we're gonna check in with uh, April Freshness. Don J and April Freshness are gonna take the orgasm quiz. And of course, we got Don Bag Trivia, and all that good stuff coming up. But we got a funny, funny video that we're gonna bounce to before we go to the break. And then we're gonna come back with more SM Enlightenment. So stick and stay, baby. SM Enlightenment. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, there What's up, everybody? It's Jordan Meyer, the One Man Band. You're watching RadioScene.com. It's radio you can watch. Time is running and it's clear that it's over. I keep tripping, I'm in need of some closure. What up? It's your boy Johnny Cohn. You are now tuned into RadioScene.com. It's radio you can watch. It's kind of like TV on the radio, except it's radio on the TV. Y'all ready? It's your boy Salami with the cheese. Make sure you check out the 10 speed and ground crew experience every Friday, 8.30 and 9.30. It's going down. Ready to see the man. Hey, 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 hey. Damn, what I'm doing? Juice is up, play boy. I'm cooling. I'm cooling. I'm cooling, cooling. I'm cooling, cooling. I'm just cooling. Hey yo, this your boy Jim Slice, and make sure you watch Flashback Fever Radio every Monday night on RadioScene.com. RadioScene.com. RadioScene. Dot com. One for the treble, ten for the bass. Come on, baby, do let's rock this place. <laughs> we got April Freshness. April Freshness. Hey, if you're just joining us, you're joining SM Enlightenment. We having a good time here. We just <laughs> finishing the celebrity yeah. news. 
and uh, we got April first. April first. Oh, oh, April, you got, you got, you got, to, you got, to, you got to turn your yeah, volume down over there because it's feeding back, getting you back over here. And, uh, I miss celebrity news. Uh huh. Oh, oh. Uh, uh. Yo, we gotta, we gotta. I can't hear you. You can, you can't hear me. You can't hear me. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, just look pretty. Look pretty. I, I saw it look pretty. Like she ain't already pretty. Why did we just hear her? Now we can't. Oh boy. Hey, bro. Oh bro. Hey. Uh. All right. Uh. Yeah. Oh, you have to change your settings. Anyways, as as we continue on, I got some some crazy news here. All right, because like in Florida, as we always goof on Florida, because it seems as though all of the weirdest things happen in Florida. You know, you know the fa- hey, you know yeah, exactly. That's where we got George Bush from. You know, when we get the weird things we get out of Florida, we get the face eating guy, alligator. You know, we get Casey Anthony. Alligator. Yeah. We, we, we just get a, whole, a bunch of strange stuff out of Florida. So to add to the list, we also got strange laws in Florida. We're going to talk about some other strange laws, but uh, apparently in Florida, because the laws are so crazy, there's a Florida man that won't be charged in a bestiality case. Now, it, the guy he owned the animal shelter. He worked in the animal shelter, and he's doing funny things to the... <laughs> To the dogs in there, okay. Before he puts them to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Florida authorities are powerless to prosecute a former animal shelter worker accused of performing sex acts on a dog because of a loophole in yeah. the state's anti-bestiality laws. Wording. Wording. Okay. So, all right. He's having the oral sex with the dog. Okay. There's no law in Florida. That says that he can't do that. Okay, we got a picture of this guy. All right, With a star on his face. Yeah, that's the the dog. That's what they do you put a star on your face? Only in Florida, baby. But anyway, so they they can't bust them. They can't bust them on that. You know, they got to rewrite the book. Given the all sex to the dog, they can't bust them on that. They did, however, get them on some ch- kitty porn. Because they did find him in the kitty porn. So, <laughs> Eric Antunes, 29 years old, of Clearwater, having oral sex with the dog. Law doesn't specifically forbid that sex act. So, actually, in Florida, it is legal to blow your dog. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're happy about that. Oh, Lord. Then you can put him to sleep. Hey, in <laughs> Chicago, if you get drunk in the cab, baby, you throw up, you're going to pay up from now on. All right? After years of fighting, Chicago cab drivers will finally get their uh, vomit tax uh, starting on July 1st. So the way it is now, if you throw up in the cab now, it's going to cost you $50. Okay? And they definitely need that here in New Haven. You know? Add a new fork. Oh, oh, please. <laughs> Say what, April? And in New York. And in New York, they need that. They need it if you puke on the street. They should ticket people for puking on the street. That is evil. That is evil. That is nasty. You should have to, you should have definitely have to pay and cut it up. I'm so glad that we got your connection going now. How are Good, you? No, I, <laughs> How are I you there, so- lovely April? <laughs> How was your week, baby? I'm just happy to be here right now. My, you're my uh, oasis right now. <laughs> you heard about the Florida guy. You heard about the Florida what? guy, right? With the, with the doing the, the funny stuff to the dog. Why can't you blow your dog? <laughs> this is America. I'm so sorry. I thought this was America. What are you doing to the dog that the dog is gonna have a problem with? You know that the dog. But can the dog was itself? in jail. He was at the kennel, so it was like. A- yeah, well, yeah. Against his rights. <laughs> the dog, he was, he was in the shelter, so I guess. <laughs> see, what we oh needed to get was awesome. a picture of the dog so we could see the expression <laughs> on the dog's face. The big smile on his face. Hey, that's what we needed to see. Visit. That dog was happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a happy, happy dog. He was a happy dog. 
What's the problem? You can, I, I can see why you can't screw a dog. Like, I, I get that. That would hurt the dog. That could be very painful for everything. You can't blow a dog? Come on, leave people alone. This is America. You can hey, blow a dog. Yeah, you, you know, you want to blow your dog, you should maybe... Uh, you know, now that's, uh, we going to put a disclaimer on that. That's April freshness. <laughs> okay? So them animal I, rights I people dogs. come after us. I'm, I'm giving them your phone number and your address. Okay? I have to blow animals that can buy dinner, so dogs are out. <laughs> Lord. You know, that's a weird law. But <laughs> well, that's a pretty weird law uh, in Florida that you can't get arrested for that. You know, but I was researching it and I found out there's a lot of weird laws out there. Like, uh, for instance, in New York, you know, women can go topless in public, providing yep. providing it is not being used as a business. Okay. That's not fair. Why? Why isn't it fair? That's like free look law. That's what they should call that. Free look law. I think if you're, you, you can stand outside in public, if you can play a guitar in public and put your little can out. Right and collect money. You could tap dance in public and put your little can out and make money. Why can't you take your cans out and put your can out and make money? I don't really understand that. That's just men being mad. That's men being sour. That's what that is. That's some nonsense right there. So we can we can take a look, but then you can't make no money off of it. Okay. Yep, just sit there with your boobs out and put a can in front of you. <laughs> now he's gonna offer you money. Makes money. <laughs> Now, it's against the law. Check this out. It's against the law in New York to throw a ball at someone's head for fun. Now, now we was breaking the law like... We was going to... Yo, we, we was breaking the law like crazy because that's all dodgeball is. That's yeah, dodgeball. Exactly. Throwing balls at heads. You know? It doesn't make any sense. Every gym teacher should be arrested right now. There should be a massive summer roundup of gym teachers who have their class play dodgeball because that's all that game is. That's confusing. Ah, hey, well, it's against the law in New York. Technically, it is. It is illegal for a woman to be on the street wearing body hugging clothing in New York. <laughs> So, April, your ass, you should be Skyping from inside the jail right now. I live in Harlem. People pretty much just wear body stockings here. That's it. You got moms, grandmoms, auntie pushing the stroller and like high heels and like a unitard. And they're going to a PTA meeting in church right after. That is clearly not being enforced. <laughs> and in New York, the penalty for jumping off of a building is death. Self-enforced. I like it. That's highly economical. <laughs> so if the building don't kill you, the law will. Well, That's hilarious. Floor, yeah, yeah. Look, the gravity or the pavement, the sidewalk outside. Okay. Yeah. Contact with the pavement. Okay. <laughs> now, in Texas, it is illegal to sell one's eye. <laughs> It is also that illegal is to milk another person's cow. You cannot milk somebody else's cow. All right. <laughs> Can you suck on the, somebody else's cow's teeth? Can you do that? Or is that illegal as well? In Texas, it is illegal for children to have unusual haircuts. Okay. And uh, it is illegal for one to shoot a buffalo from the second story of a hotel. Ah, uh, Sarah Palin's never going there. <laughs> Homosexual behavior in Texas is a misdemeanor offense. That's, so, that's hilarious. Some of us better stay out of Texas. Andre. <laughs> <laughs> pow, pow, Don. <laughs> Gotta get a female for that. <laughs> oh man. In Dallas, Great. Texas, it is illegal to possess realistic dildos. Now, you can possess a regular dildo, but it, it can't be realistic. Like With a big vein in it? 
No veins, no veins in the dildo. <laughs> no veins, no veins. <laughs> no big veins. You know, that's, <laughs> like, that means. <laughs> <laughs> that means the dildo can look like anything else, then. <laughs> no pain. Uh, no veins. And appearing in public <laughs> places wearing a lewd dress is prohibited. Okay? Hater. Hater law. Chubby hater law. And Sorry. The entire en Encyclopedia Britannica is banned in Texas because it contains a formula for making beer at home, and that is illegal. Yeah, that's not, so the whole thing, all 872,000 volumes that they would bring to your house every 20 minutes is illegal. <laughs> I make that good toilet wine. <laughs> Bruno. A lot, best. a lot of weird laws out there, baby. Hey, and you know, I got a lot of other weird laws that I, I'll put you up on, but you know, we'll, we'll, we're gonna get around to all of that, you know, uh, as as the weeks to come, you know, as the weeks to come. What I wanna do, I wanna hurry up and bounce to this break because I need to get to my main man, White Flash, because White Flash, he gonna school us on some good stuff, on some hip hop, because hey, that's what we all about here. I mean, so we got that segment coming up. Also, if we got time, we can also get into our discussion about race relations, in America, all right, and we still got Dimebag Trivia, and we have the Oral Sex Quiz Trivia with Don J and April Freshness. So all that and more coming up right here on SM Enlightenment. And uh, hey, I got another little video right here to cut away to right before we go into the break. So just something else to make you think a little bit, baby. Something else to make you think. Check it out. It's SM Enlightenment right here on RadioScene.com. Radio you can watch. I just walked in. Has it been going on for a while? No, no it's not. So. This guy just dropped the papers a couple minutes ago. About a minute ago, yeah. not even. Look at that lady over here. It's like everybody. Yeah. Radioscene.com 
What up, what up, it's DJ Santo. Be sure to tune in each and every Saturday, all right, to the main event mix show, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., right here on RadioScene.com. Get this thing, I'm gonna live this life in the fast lane. This is Jim Slice from Flashback Fever. You're watching RadioScene.com. It's radio you can watch. Radio Scene. What's going on out there? This is Sonya Blade, straight from Brooklyn, NYC, representing. And y'all checking out RadioScene.com. It's radio you can watch. SM Enlightenment, if you're just joining us, it is SM Enlightenment. We are the original SM crew and organization of musically talented disc jockeys and party people. The man on the mix, he is the Grand Wizard. CBD inside the place to be. We got Don J in the house, the very lovely April Freshness is Skyping in with us. And uh, as promised, as billboarded, we got a very special guest with us. Okay, all the way from Bridgeport, Connecticut, USA. Funny, he flew in. We flew him in. We, we, we spent a lot of money to get him here, you know. Overnight flight. It was the red eye. Okay, you're sitting next to Octo Mom in there. But hey, uh, we got we got my main man, White Flash. White Flash in the house, y'all. Give it up for White Flash, the legendary, the legendary White Flash. All right. Brother White Flash. What's going on, my man? Grateful to be here, man, with the 40 and over. 40 and over? Ain't nobody 40 over here. What are you talking about? Many moons ago, many moons ago. Oh, man. So, I know a lot of people... A lot of people, uh, you know, locally here um, in Connecticut, we in Connecticut locally. A lot of people they 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 hear about you, they they or they you know see you you know DJing in the clubs and, and this and that. But a lot of people really don't know your history and and hip hop and the whole music and the whole movement and everything. So you know what I'd like to do is I like to recap a little bit and, 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 and let's take it back a little bit. So. So if I if I if I if I could paint the picture of a young white flash, yeah, <laughs> and I know we gotta go back a little bit. Y'all was there. Don't act like y'all wasn't there. <laughs> y'all was there. Flash, what, what what was it that that moment? How old was you when you when you just knew that you wanted to to be involved in in, in this music? Man, uh, <laughs> probably back in 77, 76. 76, 77. Uh, high school days. Uh, I went to Harden High School. Okay. And uh, you know what the basketball program was like back then? Uh huh. Wes Matthews, John Bagley. And uh, talking to the mic, we want to make sure people hear you. We good, we good. Uh, I played a lot of sports in high school, but in the off season, uh-huh. I used to work out with the basketball team. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So uh, during the games, they used to have this one little turntable with a speaker, and they needed the music played for the warm up line. Nice. So I used to have to, you know, play one record on a turn, put the mic up to the, you know, while they're in the warm up line. Just so right one there, record. Yeah, yeah, just. One record, then, one need, and this. Rapidly Rock in the House was like 20 minutes long. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, because that's 77. That's like, is it Dance to the Drummers beat? Like around that, I, yeah. I know that was like around that time. Around Get up that. and dance, freedom. It, it was, 
the Voltage Brothers type. I mean, it was just crazy back then, man. So, okay, so what what is it that transforms you from that to to actually like getting your 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 first set of turntables and 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 Mitch match turntables. Mitch, okay. <laughs> we couldn't get to that match back in the day. We had to get the Gerard and and they still had the forty five stem hanging up in the middle. So, <laughs> That's I, had, I had a straight arm and an SR on, on the Yeah, we never had no we never had no uh, matching turntables till like the beginning of the eighties, man. You know how it was, man. Back then we didn't really do it for no money. We just we just did it because uh, that was the love that we had for it. Now, what were your influences to want to DJ? Like, what, what was you hearing at that time? When we, when we, when we think about, like, 1978, 70, 79, like, 77, like, what, what was your influence, like, hip-hop, hip-hop all the, wise? All the old school brothers, man. Grandmaster Flash, uh, Charlie Chase, uh, Joey D back in the day, Super Mario. I mean, all the old school do. Uh, Mastodon, rest in peace. Uh, Dr. Rock. For the Force NDs. Wow. Man. You know, now, see, because we got some flyers. I, I, I grabbed some flyers from your Facebook, all right? You know, and, and I, I know we got some flyers here that, that, that show some of the stuff that you was doing now, because apparently I see that now you, you parlayed the DJ and then you, you, you had a group as well. A, 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 a DJ, couple of groups. A DJ and a, a MC is always going to be two separate entities until you bring them together like a dj is gonna start off with dj but then you go to the crew type thing uh-huh back in the day uh i had a couple different groups man i mean uh i saw that uh i didn't know that i i knew about i knew about the three the hard way right yeah then after that skinny boys yeah i knew about skinny boys but, but then it seemed like you had some other stuff going on before all of that uh we had a group called Legion of Doom, L-O-D. Legion of Doom. And Mr. Magic from New Haven put out the the, the hip-hop bebop convention. That tri-state compilation? I remember that. Right. With Chill 3 MCs. It was it was all it was Connecticut artists. Okay. And was the the guy with the rapping ventriloquist the Woody was Doom? he Connecticut? Yeah, yeah, Woody, he, was, yeah. he was Connecticut artist. Too? He was on there too, but that kind of like set the stage for that door from that date is still open for the entire state, except for the artists right now. Don't know how easy they got it. Back then, we didn't have MP3s. We had budgets. We had to go walk records to radio stations. We had right. to press records. Now, send the MP3 to the station. Right, exactly. Cut a, cut a check, take a couple DJs out to dinner, and, and, and it's all good. But hip-hop, man, well, let me say hip-hop versus rap. Now the, the 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 group I, I know that Wiz you got a, a lot of notoriety with uh, was the Skinny Boys, uh, you know I I I I I know that I remember uh, being in New York and and hearing a lot of those records being played on you know Red Alert and 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 all of that so I um and and you got hearing, a lot of heavy Philadelphia play too. I remember when I used to be out there. Yeah, because we used to have to go to Universal, which was down in Philly, to bring records. Mm. So the network was set up. The Skinny Boys was an after thing of the fact that uh, after, after back in the days, we had a group called Superior Crush. Okay. Uh, and then we had a group called Twice. And it seems like every time we splintered off a group, we would, you know, do certain things. I mean, you got five rappers and two DJs. Sooner or later, you got because there's too many, too many people in a mix. So it was a good thing to break off. You know, three the hard way went one way. Uh, Skinny boys went the other way. But we, no matter what, to this day, we're all friends. And uh, Skinny boys had the first major, you know, one of the first major label deals, which was with Jive Records. And right. that was kind of after Steezo had his first major deal with Fresh Records. Okay. So, you know, that was cool. Everything else we did was independent labels, which to this day, you really still don't need a major label. If you, if you, if you know what you want to do, why do you need a major label? Now, who would be some of the, who was some of the acts at the time that you guys were able to, to you know, to go on tour Ooh. with and do shows with, you know? Doc, you know we're showing our age. Drop right? some names for me. Drop some names. Just so that, so that people know where, 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 where you been. Drop some names for Force me. MCs, Cold Crush Brothers, 
Uh, went on tour with Houdini, Fat Boy, Salt and Pepper, Heavy D, uh, the original Fresh Fest at the Coliseum. We did 90 cities with that. Rest in peace of the Coliseum too. Yeah, because we got we got some of those uh, some some of those flyers. I've been rocking them, you know. Uh, of uh, and this one here, that's with the Fat Boys. That's the Coliseum gig right there. Salt man. and Pepper, Heavy D, and the Boys, New Haven Coliseum. Yeah, that's the original Fresh Fest, man. Wow. And we can and we did the Fresh Fest last year down in Bridgeport. So yeah, I've been blessed, man. A D, uh, you know, a, a DJ. DJs are gonna work. Absolutely, you know, it's all you know. Well, you know, we, we, you, you, you know, you definitely got it because hey, not everybody, us MCs, you know, we we can come and go, but they always gonna need somebody to to make them dance. Right. And I, as I, dance. I was telling Stevie, so I can't make them dance by by screaming at them. So always, oh, nah, you, know, you always need the DJ. He's the DJ. You're the rapper, and you're the flavor to what he do, what to what he does. Absolutely. But Connecticut is Connecticut. I, I love it. No matter where I go, I, I sometimes I don't want to come back, but just my state, my love, my state. So I mean, when we when, when we talk about hip hop and and all that you've seen of hip hop of where it's been and uh, where it's going, what, what what is your feeling about the state of it, the state of hip hop? I mean, you know, the, do you have a good feeling when you you, you hear a lot of the stuff? That's going on, or are you optimistic about the future, or, or what do you think that's ultimately going to wind up? I, I, I think that, like I said, hip hop versus rap. Hip hop is always going to consist of recycling, like everything, whether it's verses or whether it's music. That was the essence of hip hop: taking somebody else's music and doing something with a twist to it. So if we all stay with that same formula, right now it's kind of hip hop. You make a good record everybody can listen to, that's about it. You're not gonna have a good album. You can forget about it. I mean, that's why a lot of cats only get one single deal. It's only good for one record single. And you spend all your budget on that one single, then you don't have enough money to make an album. So what are we, what are you really creating? A lot of cats, there's a lot of talent in Connecticut. But for some reason, a lot of egos are ahead of the talent. And it's like, yeah. you know, I hear something that I like. Yo, can I get a copy of that? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, man. You got to go to iTunes. No, I don't. You don't got to get it played either. A lot of, lot of artists and groups got to understand. The DJs are the backbone of this. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of cats think they just get a little bit of play on the major BDS station, which in, uh, I've, I've, been, I've done college radio, which I loved doing college, which you got. I've been to commercial. And then I... We all have 20 plus years of radio in this room. Yes. <laughs> right. We all do. But they don't understand that, that that commercial radio is a business. And first foremost, it's a business. So all of that, ooh, I got some play on the radio. Okay, and I mean it might your cousin might, you know, give you some dab, but you might get some, you know, a couple girls, but <laughs> what is it really doing for your career? Because because major labels want to see, number one, they want to see BDS spins. Number two, they want to hear a buzz on the street. Because there's no more such thing as a development program. They want artists and records to come doing half of their work. That's how them down south cats made it successful. They took that street knowledge and that drug money and politicked it into their own labels. So let me ask you, do you think that hip-hop, uh, that hip-hop, I, I, of course, it, it, it entertains people initially but do you think that hip-hop has a social responsibility to the community like to 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 educate or to 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 enforce certain values or you know like you know because you when you watch the, the whole decay of the moral decay of america and the way that the entertainment industry supports such you know such garbage do you think that hip-hop has a responsibility to to uh, to the people to 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 uplift them, or do you think that it's, it's people should just leave that alone and just it should just be entertainment? I, I mean, to to us, man, hip hop has always been uh, speaking about your life's activities or certain situations in life right. and putting them on record. Or these days, I still consider the same old school format. You got a club record, you got a radio record, and you got a street record. 
A lot of cats think a street record is a club record. It ain't gonna happen. Don't bring mm -hmm. it to me at 1.30 tell me I put my shit on. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, I just think that if they follow the same formula, you, I, I think that somebody in Connecticut got to do something. Got to. Uh, it's not about sounding like what's out right now. Yeah, they need to they blaze their own trails. Go against the grain and do what you want to do. That's right. And, you know, because I still go by the same thing. If it ain't got to be, I don't care what you saying. If, the, if you don't got a beat, I mean, people listen for the beat first. And as they learn the record, they learn the, the vocals. Right, right. Same thing back in the day. If it didn't have a beat within the first 20 seconds, I'm taking the record off. So you need a good groove. Okay, so you're hearing that. You're hearing that. To all of you aspiring... Uh, Artists. Artists. I, I was going to use another word for it, but yeah, artists. Okay. Uh, artists, that's a good safe word. Because I was going to say you aspiring hip hoppers. And, and there's a lot of good talent in Connecticut. There is. There is. But you there know, I, 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 you know I, still say, I still say it that I'm the best MC out here. And I, I issued a challenge to everyone in Connecticut just to say that, hey, the International Hip Hop Parade is coming. Oh, yeah. Big shout to Al Bazaar, man. And yeah. I forgot about that. Man. And we want to find out who the best, who the king and queen is right here in Connecticut. R. 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 Let's see. We got uh, <laughs> who they be. We got the. Uh, be Grammar Correcticals. Say what? Be Grammar Correcticals. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my degree's in journalism. See, April Freshness, you, you, you learn something new. Huh? You learn something new about Connecticut. Huh? You guys are smart. <laughs> Man, somebody gotta do something, man. Well, hey, blow you on know, that pinwheel. We 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 wanna we wanna uh, see who the best MCs are, uh, the king that's and queen, request. and that's not only for Connecticut, but it goes for every state. So you know, as far as the international hip hop parade is, we want you to go to ihhparade.org and register, register yourself in there, okay, and um. Let's get this thing cracking. Let's see who the best is. Doc, Ooh. remember one thing, man. Mm -hmm. It's a tri-state area for that reason. It's not New York and Jersey. Right. It's New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. That's right. If one get in from Connecticut, they all get in from Connecticut. Yeah. It's not rocket science, man. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that, you know... People just need to know how to, you know, just go ahead on and posse up and make and, make something strong. And make market they strong self happen. and market their music. And like I said, I man, three records, a, a club record is a must. A thug record is a must. That's it. And a good radio record is a must. You don't need 10 albums because the only one making money is the dude that's in the studio. <laughs> you got that right. Brother White Flash, man, I tell you, it's. We, you know, we, 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 we need to just devote the whole show to you. And it was Stevie's uh, initial idea is just to have you up here kicking it with us. Because, you know, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm the, history, anytime, the, history, the history that you know and that you that, that you that got on you, you know, I mean, we could spend the whole show. So we're definitely going to have you back, you know, uh, probably, you know, on a semi-regular basis. Yeah, because Grandpa Flash opened the doors for all of us. <laughs> Grandpa Flash. <laughs> Hey, you know that's out that's out of love, baby. That's out of love. That is out of love. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah, out of love. You know, DJ's you know, DJ. We had we had all types of stuff coming up. You know, we always running out of time, man. We get we get it together. Well, I need more than an hour week. show up here. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. We definitely need more of an hour show because still didn't get to the race relations. And uh we and had the orgasm, the orgasm quiz. Going to have to go for next week. All right, well, race relations Typical. are worse than they were Typical. a little while ago, but they're better than they used to be at one point, so we're done with that. So so, so we're not going to hit you with the orgasm quiz this week there, April Freshness. So, so typical that you would run out of time for my orgasm, right? Typical. Hey, we just, hey, we're going to give it. Dudes hey. run out of time for my orgasm. Let's act surprised. Hey, hey, hey. Blow we, on that pinwheel. Listen, Blow on that pinwheel. What, we, what we're going to do is. No more requests. No okay. more requests. When I get my orgasm, I'll blow on the fucking pinwheel. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 
I thought this was the a radio show. Coming to Harlem, I'm coming to Harlem. Hey, look at it this way. You don't get tested, you don't get quizzed, so you got a whole nother week to do more orgasm research. Uh, I'm gonna hit the books <laughs> real yeah. hard. Hit the books. <laughs> You know, the whole thing is, is just that you can't go to Texas with your realistic dildo because it's illegal. Okay. Yeah, you can't go to Texas because you're Don't black. Don't bring your dog to the kennel. Three of you in that room to just know, just stop. <laughs> That's right. And keep your dog out of the kennel yeah. <laughs> if you go to Florida. No conjugal business with your dog. <laughs> hey, we want to thank you for watching. Okay. And uh, we definitely want to thank my, my main man, our special guest, DJ White Flash, all right, and uh, hey, um, you know, we, we definitely gonna get back to you, do some more stuff with you, White Flash, and you know, I got a project I wanna get down with you on, we gonna talk about that as well. Don J, as always, it's been a pleasure, brother. Holla! And Mr. Grand Wizard CBD. <laughs> yes, sir. You got a shout out? Oh, uh, yeah, of course, uh, Al Pizarro, everyone at the interrupt, yeah. International hip hop parade. <laughs> hey, whatever DJ got my headphones. Oh yeah, whoever the, the <laughs> DJ is that, that stole the headphones from out of Van Dome when we did the event on Saturday. Okay, you you, you need to return those headphones. See what I mean? No, no. We right. already got the FBI on you. No FBI is on the DJ you. community whatsoever. Yeah, man. nobody respecting the DJ. Did you no. not Zenhauser. Zenhauser and they stuff, man. We we, we gonna Zen teach him one day. Uh, Abel Precious, you got any shouts before we go? Just to you, Doc, because you didn't introduce yourself before. You introduced everybody. I, I, I hope you I hope you take enough time for yourself. I hope you take enough time for yourself. I just love you so much. <laughs> oh, I love you too, baby. Well, thank you. And, and shouting thank you. you out, Doc. I'm shouting you Thank out. you for always being there with <laughs> us. And, you know, we love April. And next, next week we have it together. So you're with us from the very beginning of the show, baby. So, hey. This has been I'm gonna SM try my best too. This has been SM Enlightenment, and you know, if you like this show, be sure that you spread it, that you share it to everybody. Next week, we'll definitely uh, get get into more of our serious discussions about the race relations in America. I have some guests that are going to be checking in with us, and um, I, I got some other good stuff for you next week. So, don't go away, baby. Every Tuesday, seven to eight, right here at RadioScene.com. All right, and uh. Coming up, we have an encore presentation of last week's show coming up right after this. So don't go nowhere. Stick around right here, baby. And as always in parting, you know the deal. Positive is the attitude. We want you to do for self, be yourself, love yourself. If you love somebody, let them know because we love you. you. So pass it on. Peace and blessings, y'all. Ow, this, this feels, feels good. good. I love you, Doc. Exciting with live DJs, talk shows, and a booming online community. It's internet radio you can watch. Watch radioscene.com. 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 Radioscene.com.